college football full slate of games today. I'm excited. We are going to try to make you some money. I'm Jason Hammer. And by the way, if you're wondering how long it took for us to run off our female co-host, Danielle, if you bet under one week, <laughs> cash that ticket. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I'm Scott Long. Here's what we do on this show today. We're going to talk football. We're going to drink like tequila. We're going to eat pizza. And we got Bob Kravitz. I mean, three of the four of those are awesome. <laughs> Let's make it right here, right now. <laughs> this is All Indiana Bets. Where, hammer, hammer. <laughs> Where is Danielle? I, I feel like every week we on this show, we are, we're getting these beautiful, talented women. They don't stay around long. I, I feel like we're at, I don't know, Leo DiCaprio's house. You know, it's just, <laughs> that's what we're doing here on this show. So, you know, Danielle will be back next week. Hey, Danielle, uh, understand that. Thank you. I came back from Milwaukee this past week. Yeah. I went up there to watch some Cubs and Brewers, and clearly... I brought the sausage fest with us because we're going <laughs> to hang out today. We're going to bring in some more guests, and we are going to have a good time talking about college football. Four and one last week, Hammer. Thank you. Oh, my God. Right out of the gate, you're 80% in the colleges. We should have, like, a blurb for that. Just Oh, will you look at that. Will you look at it right there on the screen? Somebody screenshot that. Send that to Hammer because that's going to be his new profile picture <laughs> on Twitter. What do we got happening today? Uh, so the biggest game in the country is Notre Dame and Ohio State. Yes. And we're going to get to that here in just a moment. But before we do, let's reset what's happened already with some of the Indiana teams. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to Thursday night. A rowdy West Lafayette. Yeah. Penn State comes in. It was everybody's sexy underdog pick. Purdue getting the points. I had the over in this one, but boy, was that a dumpster fire late. Uh, I had Purdue lost by half a point. There was no reason that Nebraska should have lost that game against the spread. There's no reason that Purdue should have lost that game. And last night, speaking of IU and Indiana, and, and Indiana versus uh, Illinois, Illinois should have won that. Who knows what's going on in the Big Ten? But the key is you got to handle the ball and not turn it over and not have a lot of penalties. All the three teams that lost had those problems. I invited Purdue's head coach Jeff Brom oh. to be with us today, and he said, ah, I think I'll pass. That's a good <laughs> joke. That's a smart joke if you watch that game. I'm sorry. That's a great joke if you watch that game. The oh, other night. my God. Run the ball. <laughs> and Indiana wins a game last night. They have no business no winning. Business. We told you last week, take advantage of that number that the Fighting Illini were getting because it was going to go down. It Ultimately, it did. Early bird got the worm. If you got the Illini plus three and a half, you still won last night. But even if you took Illinois money line or minus one and a half yesterday, I feel like Brett Bielema owes you an apology. Yeah. That was the right bet. I still maintain that was the right bet, even though it didn't pay off. Uh, let, let's just go to the Ohio State. Because <laughs> you're four and one. I lost in all three of those games. So I don't, well, I guess I pushed on the other one. What happens today? Ohio State and Notre Dame. I mean, this is the way that college football should actually kick off. It's exciting right. that we have a I mean, these are two of the four or five most uh, televised teams, the best ratings. What do you say on this game? Because I'll tell you right now, I like Ohio State. The line was 17 and a half. Now it's minus 16. Minus 16, I changed it. I said, wipe the board, Peter. I want to take Ohio State. I'll take the Buckeyes. I am not bought into the Freeman coaching thing yet. He's never been in this situation, ever, ever. No core coach, assistant coach has ever jumped into a game like this first game ever in the history of college football. I like Ohio State to win by 21-24. It's amazing how much .5 also known as the hook, can come into play yeah. here. Because I'm a radio show on Thursday night. The line went up to 17 and a half. And I wanted no part of that because that means that's three touchdowns. That's a big difference. But somehow the gambling gods shining down on us today and it goes down to 16. 
I, like you, Scott, I am in on the Buckeyes minus 16 here. And let me tell you why. The shoe is going to be rowdy. It's prime time. This is going to be the second most watched game Ohio State has all year outside of the Michigan game. So this tells me that the Heisman campaign for C.J. Stroud gets going tonight. This Buckeye coaching staff, they've got weapons up and down that offense. Defensively, not the best team in America, but those wide receivers, the quarterback, they're looking to put on a show tonight. Coach Day wants his quarterback to win the Heisman Trophy. And you're playing for style points, too. If Ohio State gets up by 17, you think they're pulling any starters to get ready for the Big Ten campaign? Not against Notre Dame, not on primetime television. Lay the 16 with the Buckeyes here, and you will go to the buffet with me later on this week. Another big matchup we've got today yeah. uh, involves an SEC squad taking on a Pac-12 squad, Scott. We've got Oregon, we've got Georgia, the defending national champion, Georgia Bulldogs. And let me jump on this one right away. Yeah. I love the under in this one. The line is at 16 and a half. That's down from 17. So if you're a Georgia backer, you like that. If you're an Oregon backer, maybe not so much. But even though Georgia has lost a lot defensively, I mean, they had multiple first rounders leave. It's Georgia. Even their backups last year probably would have been a top five defense in America. They don't uh, have any issues with depth on that Georgia defense. And this game could go either way. The Oregon coaching staff, certainly familiar with Georgia. Uh, the new head coach, a former assistant, Oregon's quarterback, former Auburn quarterback. But that goes both ways, too. Georgia knows what to expect out of Oregon. So I like the under in this one. I think that's too many points for multiple first rounders on defense here. I'm going to ride with the under 54 here, Scott. I like that. Um, I would lean personally Oregon. I liked it better at 17. But I love the under like you do. I like unders in general early in the year. I think the offenses, there's so many different transfer quarterbacks that are happening. They're not really in tune with the wide receivers. This is new college football. Um, that's why today uh, another Oregon team, Oregon State, is playing Boise. Boise State, and you think, Boise State, they're, they're going to score 60 points themselves. No, ever since Hartson left to Auburn, they got a defensive style of football. They were under almost every game last year. I still think they're under. Oregon State is a much more uh, defensive-minded team as well. I love the under later on tonight. Catch the under on this, and I like your under too. So we are under early in the year. So we've got two picks on the board already. We have three more official picks to make, including the world-famous long shot, the degenerate yeah. special. We're talking a lot of college football today, but we're also talking a little Indianapolis Colts football. Yeah. We are one week away from the start of the NFL season, and look what the cat dragged in. Yeah. We got Bob Kravitz here. Oh, my gosh. And I, he's already at the bar. That's a degenerate special <laughs> right there. <laughs> Bob. Uh, don't even worry about the cap. There he goes. Yes, Drink sir. From our sponsor. Let's get on to this right now. Nobody has more fun than we do on nope. all Indiana vets. We talk a little trash. We have some drinks. We eat and we bring in some special guests. You know, when you didn't think there could be more sex appeal in this <laughs> studio, we bring in the champion of all Indianapolis riders. I'm not talking Benner. I am talking Bob Kravitz. Wow. Better taking some heat today. Yeah, well, that's what I do. Uh, great to have Bob. You're with The Athletic I now. Am. I am. Uh, why don't I'm you... shrinking, apparently. Yeah, I did mention that. Well, you're shrinking because you were up till 4.30 when you got home from the IU game. Did you see that happening, by the way, Bob? No, I thought, uh, 
You'd already written the lost story already. That's I, I, had it, I had it in my head pretty much. I didn't see any way they're going to move the ball. No. And by the way, that was the worst officiated game I've seen in a long time. There Illinois got robbed out of a touchdown. Anybody that had money on the fighting Illini last night, I know we're not blame the official people, right. but that was a big overturn. Very big overturn. Yeah, that was bad. But what we're here to do is talk about the Colts. Every year, Colts fans are like, I'm going to the book. We're going to win the AFC South. And guess what? What's the last year that the Colts won the AFC South? Uh, that would be before I started shrinking. <laughs> 2014. <laughs> I looked it up, Bob. It's craziness. I couldn't believe it when I read it. Then I'm looking through the Wikipedia list, and there's, I mean, of course, Tennessee has won a bunch of them. Houston, Houston won twice. Yeah. Jacksonville won once. Yes. The Colts haven't won since 2014. They've been in the playoffs only twice since then, too. The clock, the clock be ticking. You know what? It seems like the clock's been ticking for a while. Where is, speaking of things ticking, they are supposed to win 10 games according to Vegas. So you have to, have to bet 11 or oh. 9. Where would you place them? I'd, I'd be more inclined to go 11. I think they're going to win 10 games. I mean, I, I'm stuck on 10. But if Ryan has a little more left in the tank than right. we think he does, uh, if this defense plays as well as I think it will, uh, and if they can get a little bit of production out of this wide receiving group and tight end group, I think they're an 11 win team, especially because Tennessee is not the team they used to be. They lost A.J. Brown in trade. They traded him away. And then, of course, Harold Landry got hurt this week, their best pass rusher. So does 10 wins win the division? Because I'm with you, Bob. I think 10 is the number. Like, there are some sports books where you could bet exactly 10. I'm in on that. Is 10 a number that wins this division? I think in the, tri in the tiebreaker. I, 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 could, I could see one of those deals where it goes down to a tiebreaker. Both teams win, win 10 in a row. You know, it's like the eighth tiebreaker, whatever it is. Who's got the better, the better looking cheerleaders? You know, that's the 10th <laughs> right. uh, tiebreaker. So, yeah, I, I, th I think 10 will be enough. I, I, I don't think that Tennessee is the team that they once were. And the schedule, when you look at who the Colts have to play outside the division, it's the AFC West, uh, yeah. which is, last Good time luck. I checked, the polar opposite of the AFC South right now. It's the best. It's the best in the NFL. I think it's going to be nine. Nine will win the AFC South. What? Nine? I do. I nine. think Tennessee is going to win eight. Ooh. Oh. And, if, and if you want me to put money on any of those four teams, I would take Jacksonville at plus 650 to win the South because all it takes is an injury to Ryan or something to go off that, that we've seen it already with the Colts. You know Jacksonville and the Colts playing towards the end of the year, if it means anything, Jacksonville's going to win that game. Right. Uh, I think Lawrence takes a big step up this year. I do too. I, 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 that's the only team I see doing better than last year overall. I think the Texans will stay the same. I What's think. the number on the Texans for their for their? Uh, it's low. It's low. Peter, they, they, they you got to be about five or six. For us? Maybe five or six. Yeah, something Peter's like that. And they're high on their quarterback, Davis Mills. They, you they talk like to the him. folks down at Houston. Yeah. Sean Salisbury does a program on the radio with the Texans. They're high on Davis Mills as their quarterback. Yeah. Four yeah. and a half is Four and the a half? Uh, projected over. win total. Uh, over. Yeah, it's For weird. Sure. That's where we're at. I think you're looking at potentially the division between six and ten wins being you know where it's at it's going to be closer towards the end unlike a lot of years with the AFC South where it's a two-team race right. uh, I would love to say I think the Colts are going to do great Bob but you brought up the two things that really bother me the wide receivers and the tight ends I would still argue the tight end room is maybe the worst one in the NFL I mm -hmm. felt like they needed desperately to make something happen there they the lost Doyle who wasn't catching balls but he was the one guy that could block right. Right. as a tight end uh, it's pretty miserable on that front uh, Ballard's gonna have to answer a lot if it's a receiver issue teams don't win in the playoffs now by running the ball right this this is the hill that he's ready to die on yeah. and I think he's going to perish <laughs> I really I really do. I'm also concerned about their left tackle, Matt Pryor, who's yeah. playing that position for the first time in his career. Um, you know, Matt Ryan's not a guy who's going to get out of trouble. He's, no. he's a statue back there. So there, there's a lot of issues with this team. There are issues with all teams. I love the Colts' defense. I think that if they're going to do anything this season, they will be a defense-first outfit. All right, 30 seconds or less here. Okay. 
If you win the division, you get a home playoff game. That being said, what round of the playoffs are the Colts eliminated? Second. I, I think they are a good team that's not great. You know, you, you, you look at Kansas City and they got Kelsey, they got game breakers. You look at all the really good teams in this conference, they've got game breakers on the outside. I don't know that the Colts have that. Um, they're going to rely heavily on the running game once again. I think Ryan will be a little better than Carson Wentz, but I don't think it's going to be good enough to get deep in the playoffs. If anybody wants more of yeah. your amazing insight and wit, where can they find you, sir? They can find me at theathletic.com, and all you do is sign up and I get money. Yeah, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's the best deal in sports. I mean, you know, you can, great go, stuff. you can go anywhere with whatever team you enjoy at The Athletic. And, Bob, your profile looked amazing on television. It did. Uh, it my looked profile. fantastic. So, you going to stick around and drink with us? Well, I have, That's to, a yes. I That's have a yes. I have to write, so I'd have to say sure. <laughs> oh, it's going to be the best article of all time. Exactly. When we come back, this is what the people have been waiting for. Yeah. The long shot, the degenerate special. Get your money ready. We're going to the bank. That's next on All Indiana Bets. Remember, you can't drink all day if you don't start in the morning. Um, I love that they give us a bar with top shelf booze. We got some Lunazol tequila going here, mixing a few the drinks. The Blanco, it's so the Blanco good. Blanco, and weirdly, I know this sounds rednecky, Diet Mountain Dew with it. It because tastes like a margarita. Nuts. So here we go. Is this long shot time? It is. This is the segment where you are going to find someone who's got the odds stacked against them, yes. and we are going to hitch our wagon to them, and then we're going to go to the bank. This is going to be a shocker. Uh, uh oh, the glasses on are on. It's this, go time, baby. This, Let's go. This is the shocker. South Florida plus 11 and a half versus BYU. BYU is like a football juggernaut. They have been amazing the last three years. At 4 p.m., BYU, Provo, Utah, the nice, beautiful weather, no humidity. Goes down to South Florida, Tampa. It's going to just feel like an armpit there. I am telling you, it'll be like 100 degrees with, with the heat index. These poor guys from BYU are going to be like, I want to go on a mission and get out of here. I love South Florida plus 11 and a half in this game. It's probably going to be a backdoor cover, but I'm just telling you right now, go with South Florida and thank me later. Now, you say backdoor cover. For those who may be watching yeah. the show for the first time, what's that mean? That means that late in the game, it could be, I don't know, 13 points is the game, and they kick a field goal in the last minute, and all of a sudden it's 10, and you cover the spread. That garbage time, meaningless score, yeah. that matters quite a bit to folks like us. Right. All right, that's your long shot. Yeah. Anybody can bet on teams that you've heard of, like BYU sure, and Ohio State South and Notre Florida. Dame. The real degenerates are riding on games like this. This is the degenerate special where two teams you don't care about are playing a game, but Las Vegas cares about them. They care about them so much they put a line on it. And you know what? The money you can win on this game, it's the same as any other game. So this brings me to Middle Tennessee State and James Madison. What? James Madison making the jump up with the big boys this year. They were FCS the last couple of years, and they were a problem. They won two natties in the FCS, made a deep run in the playoffs last year. Now they're going up to the FBS and Middle Tennessee State. They're one of those teams that are never going to be great, but they're never bad either. They won a bowl game last year. No. They won the Bahamas Bowl what? against Toledo. <laughs> James Madison's You're last game. You're making that up, Hammer. James Madison's uh. last game, they lost to North Dakota State. They also okay. lost to Villanova last year. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at Middle Tennessee State. Deeper bench, more Division I athletes. I'm getting points here. This seems unfair. Welcome to Division I football. Give me the Blue Raiders getting five points. And that, my friends, is your degenerate special. I didn't even know James Madison was playing football. I had no idea. So 
I learned so much, I would never bet my own hard-earned money. But you were 4-1 and one last week, so what am I going to say? So our best bets, mm. the ones we love the most, are coming up next. Can't wait. Get your pen out, get your paper out. We are going to tell you who we like right after this. Having a good time with you week one of college football. Even though there was a week last week, that doesn't count apparently. No. I don't know if we should be concerned that our college kids can't count, but we've got a lot of picks for you. But now it's time for the best pick. At Scott Comedy on social media. Hit me up, Scott. What do we got? This is a big game. This is exciting. And this is the Brian Kelly kickoff to his LSU Southern career. He's from New Hampshire. He has no understanding of what anybody's saying down in Louisiana. <laughs> but Maddie's there is like, gosh, there's a lot of good players down here. I had to work hard to get these guys to Notre Dame. They're already here. Uh, Florida State was the same team, Hammer. Do you remember this last year where they lost to Jacksonville State? And then the guy that was a lineman <laughs> went down on his knee and proposed to his girlfriend after the worst loss in the history of the school. That's who they're playing. I liked LSU a little better when it was minus three, but I will still take the Tigers. I think they're going to be a team you should put money on the over amount of wins. Brian Kelly can coach. I'm not sure he'll be able to recruit for long down there, but he can coach, take the Tigers. The best part of that game is when they do the coaches interview yeah. because we get to hear Brian Kelly's new southern accent, <laughs> which is going to be beautiful. Like he picked it up overnight as soon as yeah. he signed that contract. Sure. All right, my best bet is really just a fade of one team, and that's Hawaii. So Western oh. Kentucky making the trip over to Hawaii. It's a long trip. There are distractions. I get that. But what did we learn last week? Everybody was in on Hawaii. Timmy Chang, the prodigal son, he's back. Here comes the air raid. And Vanderbilt, literally one of the worst teams in Division I, put a 60-burger on Hawaii. If you put Western Kentucky and Vanderbilt on a neutral field right now, Western Kentucky wins that game. So they're only giving up 16 points here. I can't wait to bet this game. Give me the Hilltoppers here, minus 16. This is one of those games where after the first quarter, you might be sweating it a little bit, but as that game wears on and the lack of depth of Hawaii kicks in, Western Kentucky, they're going to throw it around the yard. They will cover 16 points. Now, if you've spent too much money on yeah. booze, if you spent too much money on food, or maybe you spent too much money buying Scott Long's comedy material, which is now available for purchase, I got your back. Oh. Relax. Even if you just have $5, you could turn that into almost $60. We call this balling on a budget. This is a parlay bet. Yeah. As you guys know, I'm not a big parlay guy. I think they're sucker bets. But if you are down and you're looking for that Hail Mary, I got you. So let's start with this. North Carolina at Appalachian State. North Carolina was a favorite in this game a couple days ago. It was three points. Now they're the underdog in this one. That's they're getting crazy. two. We just found out their best wide receiver is not going to play today. Ah. So that's a problem. But I still think the better team is getting points here. Let's go to Major League Baseball. We're going to mix it up a little bit. The Yankees and the Rays over seven and a half. Garrett Cole's not on the mound today. The Yankees pitching staff has not been great lately. But there's too many marquee players in both offensive lineups to not hit that over. Cardinals and the Cubs, we're going to lay one and a half. That's a big number for baseball, two runs basically. But I can't stress this enough, the Cubs stink. Boy, I saw them in person last weekend, and I felt like one of the construction workers in Major League looking at the roster. <laughs> this guy here is dead. Cubs stink. <laughs> Take the Cardinals. And how about a little NFL action coming up? Season kicks off on Thursday. I love this game. I love this matchup. And Josh Allen, over one and a half touchdown passes on Thursday night. Put all those together. Put five bucks on it. You'll make almost 60 bucks. And that is how you ball on a budget. When we come back, are you ready to speak to the big, hairy American winning machine, I Scott? am. I am. There, there he is. is. There yes. he is. 
That is the cash man. The victor. Alan Cashman, Indy's premier handicapper. He's got some plays for us. He's passing them out for free. And we'll do that next, right here on All Indiana Bets. Oh, gosh, look at this. The winner right here. And uh, last year, Cashman was like every week it felt like you were 2-0. and oh. Maybe you had one, one, every, 65% last year on this show. And today, Alan Cashman, tell us who is going to win before everybody else knows. I'm going to go with Boise State plus two, two and a half. I grabbed this at plus three yesterday. That number's gone now, so we're going to have to go with plus two. But Boise, nine and three against the spread in their last 12 openers. Oregon State, two and ten against the spread in their last 12. I look at Oregon State last year, not very consistent. They had trouble at home with Washington, not very good team. Uh, they lose at Colorado, who wasn't very good. But then they, uh, they also lost at Cal, but then they beat Utah. Not consistent. This defense gave up over 430 yards in half of their games last year. You look at Boise State, plus eight in turnovers last year. They returned 17 starters, including nine from defense that held opponents under 20 points per game. Uh, I think Boise State was a year away last year, lost by one to Oklahoma State. Uh, who had a really good defense, but they did go to BYU and win, and they beat a really good Fresno State offense, blew them out. So uh, I like Hank Bachmeyer as their quarterback. I think they're better at quarterback. I think they're tougher up front than Oregon State. So I'm going to take Boise State uh, plus two on the show this week. Wow, that was more information than anyone's ever heard about Boise State. But I got to say right now, you're right. The defense is great. You see the Deer Creek sign behind Cashman. Uh, were you at the Pitbull concert last night? I think I saw no. you. No? No, I'm too busy this time of year. To, too to, busy. Uh, okay. <laughs> what is the next pick from the Cashman? Okay, we're going to go money line parlay here because I didn't see a lot out there this week that I really liked in week one. I'm going to take Liberty and FAU both on the money line at plus 145. Not a big parlay guy, but uh, I think that this is the move here this week. Uh, both teams laying three and a half to four and a half on the road. I don't normally lay points more than three with road teams, so this is going to be a money line parlay. Uh, Liberty going to have another pretty good offense. Malik Willis gone, but they added Charlie Brewer at quarterback. He was at Baylor in Utah, has over 10,000 yards passing. Uh, in college, they should have a good run game to go with that. Uh, maybe not as much on defense for FIU, but I don't think Southern Miss, they're playing today, is a very good offensive team. Not much at quarterback. Look at FAU, um, team with a really good offense. Perry at I'll, quarterback. I got to tell you now, Cash, I'm going to interrupt you. No one cares about the details of, uh, of FAU. We just know <laughs> you're going to win. You're going to win. We know Charlie Brewer is at Liberty now. Give us Liberty or give us death. Two winners in the Moneyline Parlay. How do we get a hold of the Cashman to get all these winners? You've been killing it in baseball. What's happening? Yep, 21 and seven, last 28 in MLB. Woo. Go to the CashmanWins.com. Uh, cater into the working man there. Uh, I'll help you with discipline and I'll make you some money. Go to the CashmanWins.com and become a part of our group. I, I love that. Hit up the Cashman and if someone is on the dole and is unemployed, will you still help them besides the working man? Might be able to find them a, a group on or something. <laughs> okay, so now we got to go to Hammer, I guess. Is that true? No. I guess we're going to tease the final picks. Is that what we're doing? Is that what we're doing? Yeah. I'm over here at the bar just having a good time right now watching you guys talk about all the reasons why Liberty is the pick. Now, I made a lot of money on Liberty last year. Yes, you did. I'm glad to see that they're back being good again. All right. Coming up next, we got some more picks for you. We've got some more drinks that we're going to have. And we have some pizza in studio. Oh my gosh, let's just get There's to There's rumors that it's from my hometown. No way. I'm excited for this. We got a lot more to go. Do not go anywhere. We're having a good time. It's all Indiana Bets. Are you not entertained? What other show makes you money, drinks with you, hangs out, has a good time? Um, you can tweet at me, at Jason Allen Hammer. Somebody sent me a message that says, when I stand here on camera with the drink in my hand, I look like a young Dean Martin. Oh, really? <laughs> That's, 
You kind of put the the rat in Rat Pack. Well, you thank look you, like Scott. A rat. Thank uh, you. I, you're welcome. I am going to give my final pick, and I am excited about this. Can I do this right now? Please. Because there was all this talk about Lincoln Riley going to USC, and everything's going to turn around at USC, and he brought in a lot of people. They paid a lot of money, because that's what you can do now in college football. But 32 and a half, did anyone watch USC last year in their defense? They didn't play a game where they didn't give up 32 and a half. Rice has actually got some talented athletes. You know, Rice is based in Houston. Are there any good college football players there? Not everybody can go to Houston or Texas or whatever. Go with Rice plus 32 and a half. I don't think this game is ever going to go over that number. It's not even back door. It's front door. It's the side door. Make money on that one. So you're going against USC. Yeah. I will keep it on the West Coast as well. San Diego State and Arizona. The Aztecs against the Wildcats here. And listen, I can tell you all about San Diego State. Their defense is really good. They're well coached. They had a great record last year. They're bringing a lot of people back this year. But the story is Arizona. And the story is they stink. They do. Arizona is awful. One of the worst <laughs> offensive teams in America. And the defense may be worse. I'm shocked. I'm floored that this is only six and a half. Scoop this up right now, because by the time this game kicks off, it might be at seven. You don't want to get into that touchdown ratio. You don't certainly want to get it seven and a half. Get it right now, six and a half. San Diego State, they will absolutely throttle Arizona today. So we've given you five picks each. When we come back, we will reset the big board. In case you missed any of the show, we'll tell you who all we are taking and then Peter, our producer, we kind of felt bad because we left him out of the show last week. Did we really? Yeah, that was okay. kind of my decision. <laughs> um, so we're going to have to get him in the show this week, apparently. Oh, it's in our contract. Oh, Peter dear. will give us his picks, and we'll have some food. Pizza around the corner. Mm. This is all I Indiana Fest. Now, betting lines for all Indiana bets, Hammer, are presented for the people by Caesars Sportsbook. They are back. Let's recap our picks today. Uh, winners this week I'm offering. Uh, Ohio State, minus 16. This is the game you're going to be watching against Notre Dame. Take the Buckeyes. Boise, Oregon State. Sounds like an over, right? You heard the cash man. Play the under. The defenses are strong. South Florida plus 11 and a half against BYU. BYU will be sucking eggs by the fourth <laughs> quarter. It is too hot in Tampa. LSU minus three and a half. This is a coaching deal. I'm going to take Kelly over Norvell any day of the week, and it's in New Orleans. Rice plus 32 and a half. Whoever bets on rice, I don't even like the taste of rice, but I will tell you, I'm tasting them today against USC and the Trojans. Hammer. What do you got? I'm with you on the Buckeyes. The Heisman campaign for C.J. Stroud starts tonight. I love that it went from 17 and a half down to 16. I'm in on the Buckeyes. I'm going under in Georgia and Oregon. There's a lot of familiarity here. Oregon's head coach used to be with Georgia. The quarterback of Oregon, Bo Nix, used to play at Auburn. And Georgia, even though they lost a bunch of guys defensively, still really good. We're going to go under on this one. Your degenerate special, Middle Tennessee State, is going to welcome James Madison to Division I big-time FBS football. We're going to take the points on this one. Think about sprinkling that money line. Western Kentucky, this is my best bet. They're going to go to the island and hammer Hawaii. Hawaii is just bad. They can't tackle anybody. And San Diego State against Arizona. This is a complete fade of Arizona. One of the worst major college teams in all of America right now. These are our picks. Write it down. Take a picture. Do what you need to do. And remember, if you win with our picks, we don't expect to thank you. No. But if you lose, we don't want to hear any crap yeah. either. Shut your mouth. <laughs> uh, when we come back, we're going to have something special for you. But first, my man you, Peter. You almost did it again. I almost did you it again. You were this close. I wish I could act like that was an accident. Uh, Peter, 
So who do you have for us today? All right, well, uh, my mom taught me when I was young, when in doubt, bet the under. That was one of the very first lessons I was taught as a young boy by my mother. And so that's that's what we're going to do here. We're going to take two under. Since I only got, since I got zero picks last week, I'm going to take the liberty of giving myself two picks this week. The under here is going to be uh, Ole Miss versus Troy. Actually, I think the first one I got on the screen here is Boston College versus Rutgers. Under 48 in that Who's game, it's going to be ugly. Show? Who is producing this show? I think Fire Scott's somebody. in charge this Fire week. somebody live on the show, Peter. We you know already got this be. segment. I'm just going to say this. Take the under 48 in Boston College Rutgers. It's going to be an ugly game. And then Old Miss Troy. I know Lane Kiffin can put up some points, but they got a lot back on defense. Troy's got a lot back on defense. We're going to go under 57 in that game. A lot of running of the football. I think Troy can hang on the offensive and defensive lines. So we'll go two unders. We'll go 2-0 and to start the year. And uh, hopefully next week, Hammer remembers to throw it to me as opposed to throwing it to break. But you guys got pizza to talk about. That's more important anyway. Peter, I want you to turn around to whoever's running the oh. graphics department and just yell at him right now. Just yell at him. Look at Kevin right now. Oh, Scarlet Lane oh, from Beach Grove is here. Look at this. Isaac bartender move. This is your tailgate food. We'll sample it. We'll yeah. talk about it next. We're just doing that. There is no other show like this None. one. None. We make you money. We tell you what drinks to make. I've had three. And we tell you what kind of food you can get for the big game. My man Kevin Keogh is here from Scarlet Lane Pizza in Beach Grove. And if we're going to do this, Grovers, let's do it right. Oh, no. The official baseball hat of your sectional champion, Beach Grove oh, Hornets. Beach Grove. Kevin, look at this spread. Yeah, I My man. Sense. We are set here. What do we what, got? What is that? Uh, that is our Elvira, which is uh, basically a supreme pizza, pepperoni, sausage, Hang mushroom, green today. pepper, onion. That's on our tavern style uh, okay. thin crust. This is a hand tossed one. This is one of our pizzas of the month. We I see barbecue sauce on yes, this, right? We, yep, that's right. <laughs> we try and keep it creative uh, and fun and do pizzas of the month. That's the September one. It is a uh, barbecue pizza. It's called wow. the Living Dead. It's wow. got pulled pork, bacon, hamburger, barbecue sauce, mozzarella, and Colby Jack cheese. This looks amazing. I'm going to have some right yeah, now if I you don't want to go for it. Tavern style crust. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, I really like that mm. one too. It's probably my favorite, but it's all great. Okay. So, mm, what did mm. you tell me those were? Those are bacon stuffed hot honey sticks. Are you kidding me? So they are breadsticks stuffed with bacon, and then oh. we drizzle hot honey over the top of it. Oh my See goodness. See the hot honey on it. Oh yeah. And it's like the, oh, look dripping at off too. Yeah. Like this is your ultimate football feast right here. So if you're gonna sit on the couch and watch football from noon until late tonight, Hawaii plays late, this is your spread. You can have a pizza like every other hour, and then these items over here. What are these breadsticks again? Yeah, well, this would be perfect to finish off that uh, that marathon with. These are our dessert sticks. They are uh, cinnamon maple on them uh, with some butter, and then it comes with a cream cheese dipping sauce. Okay, well, let's try this. There you go. Well, you guys eat. Kevin, tell me, how is the Grove doing these days? Oh, the Grove's doing great. Up and coming, like Main Street is just popping all the time. Anymore. Now, you haven't had, like, you know, the On Patrol live people come by and have any issues with that, have you? No, we might have <laughs> had them. They may have been out kind of in front of the place last night, but... Okay, no. that's what I thought. <laughs> it wasn't that's much. Yeah. And, and, like, how long have you been around? Uh, well, Scarlet Lane Brewing, the parent company, has been around for uh, a little over eight years. Okay. Um, uh, CEO and head brewer Elise Lane started crea creating and crafting some fantastic beers, and we finally decided we needed great food to go along with them. That is great. Now, I know you guys... Oh, there we go. We have a lot. A lot of the, I'm guessing, viewers right now that hear Beach Grove, they're like, well, we know there's good food, there's good drinks. Do you get like a discount if there's a couple moms fighting in Walmart or whatever? Oh, come on. Come on. They, they come come on. on. We are so past that. Like, are they, we are so I past will never that. be past it. <laughs> and, and I always say about Beach Grove first off, that's where Hammer went to school, he was the president, his son. Yes. President of the senior class. El Presidente. A lot of great people have come out of Beach Grove, but there's no beach and there's no grove. That's in right. The most misnamed place <laughs> on the planet. But these, this, this is my fave. Yeah, I gotta that's tell a good you, one. That frosting 
frosting makes everything better. Right. Absolutely. I'd probably put it on the barbecue pizza. That's everything right. is I better with you. frosting. If you've learned anything on this mm. show today, everything is better with frosting. Look at us. You know that we believe this. Kevin, where can people find more information and tell us where your store is located? Uh, we're at uh, 704 Main Street in Beach Grove. Um, the uh, phone number is 222-4169, area code 317, obviously. Uh, so you can call and order or you can go online to beachgrovepizza.com. This is so good. Kevin, thank you so much for coming by. Stop by, check him out. Tell him that uh, the folks from All Indiana Look Vets. Look at the toppings you. on this. This is Good amazing. luck, everybody. As always, may the odds be ever in your favor. We will talk to you next Saturday oh. and Sunday right here on All Indiana Vets. Oh. Good luck, everybody. So good.